Well, it's Sunday morning, and this is a very strange Sunday morning. I'm going to start us off now with a call to worship that's from the Presbyterian website. I wasn't going to use this, but then it links beautifully with a video that one of our kids has given us, and that will go up on the YouTube feed a little later. So it's based on Psalm 23. It goes like this. The Lord is our shepherd. God leads us beside still waters. Christ restores our souls. May the Spirit lead us in right paths. Even though we walk through the darkest valleys, we fear no evil, for God is with us. Come, let us worship God, ever three, ever one. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you in praise. For you are the source of all that sustains us. You are compassion. Hearing all who call out for mercy, you are healing, offering wholeness to those who cry out in pain. You are truth, showing the way to those who seek to know you. You are hope, bringing the promise of a new day to all people. Holy One, you have blessed us with abundance and joy, and the grace to share these blessings in Christ's name. So we praise you in this time of worship, and seek to renew our trust in you as our Creator, Redeemer, and Guide. Generous and merciful God, we confess that we have not claimed the abundant life that you offer. We resist the fullness of your truth, taking up only those parts that fit in with our opinions. We demand proof of your presence and power over and over again. Afraid we judge others harshly and fail to see your grace at work in our lives. Help us discern your presence in the world more fully. Open our eyes to your healing power and mercy. Change our hearts so that we trust the gifts of Christ's love and light. For it is in his name we offer our confession to you. Amen. So today we're in week two of our shutdown, and we don't know how long it will last. If you're a member of the Westminster Congregation, you'll be receiving a bulletin uh, via email pretty soon. And it'll explain what's happening right now. And one of the things it's going to talk about is money. As you know, much of our funds come from our weekly offering. And by not meeting, we're not collecting an offering. We have many costs like taxes, insurance, staffing, and others. We're trying to make an effort to help some of our renters out who use the building. We know that their funds are going to be very limited. And we're the bigger body. And so we feel we will probably be able to help them some with rent relief. But our ability to do that and to maintain what we're doing is reliant as ever on the gifts that people bring. If you're not sure how to give, please contact the treasurer, treasurer at mywestminster.ca, and they will tell you about how we have set ourselves up to accept offerings at this time. And if you're a regular member, we would ask you to really consider what you can give at this moment because we will have no visitors and we will of course be running a very tight tight budget right now and so thank you for any consideration that you can can give us i've noticed uh these videos people don't really watch the whole video so i'm going to try to be a bit quick here we're already at four minutes uh, i'm going to read us a little tiny bit from the book of acts uh acts one and then a tiny bit from acts two what I'm going to do actually is use the Message Bible um, because I think it's kind of fun, you know, uh, by Eugene Peterson, just to read familiar text but have a different uh, translation. So here, here it goes. So uh, Jesus is ascended and he's left and, and they're told that he's not really there and he's going to come back. Uh, and then it says this, so they left the mountain called Olives and returned to Jerusalem. It was a little over half a mile. They went to the upper room and they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, 
Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. Here's the verse I wanted to focus on. They agreed that they were in this for good, completely together in prayer, the women included, and also Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers. So they're in the upper room, and they've agreed they're going to stay there and they're going to pray together. They're waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit that Jesus has promised them is going to come. And so they're up in this room, and they don't know how long it's going to be. Does that sound familiar? They're stuck in a room together, not sure how long this is going to be. And then the book 2 says, or chapter 2 says, When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Now, here's a little reflection from Eugene Peterson, which I think is pretty helpful. He says, the thing that stands out to me here is the astonishing concentration of God on the individual. In the room where this day of Pentecost took place, a large number of people were together, all doing the same thing, praying. But the experience of God that they entered into wasn't an absorption into group thinking. It was a sharpening of personal relationships. They discovered, you see, that God deals with individuals, not masses. His power isn't promulgated by government decrees announced through the newspapers or tacked on to the post office bulletin board. He comes to each one of us. You are a unique individual. You have a history and an emotional life all your own. And God operates in intimate relationships with you, just as you are. I thought that was really helpful because right now I'm up in my bedroom. And you're in whatever room you're in. And I'm sure you've spent more time in that room lately than you normally would. Since we can't gather together, I thought it would be helpful to think about this moment in time where it's, it's highlighted. We don't need to be a full group congregation for God to work in us. We don't need to be in our beautiful building as lovely as it is. We don't have to have our stained glass windows, our fantastic audio system, our wonderful choir. All of these things help. They have historically been useful to bring us closer to God, into God's presence. And we value them. And yet we know that God can meet us where we are. Over the next couple of minutes, when you've turned this video off, I would really ask you to pray for the Holy Spirit to work in your house, in the house of everybody associated with Westminster, in the houses of all Christians, and also in the houses of all non-Christians. That a time like this, a time of trial, a time of struggle, a time of anxiety, is a perfect moment for people to reconsider a life of faith, to reconsider what life is about. And so let's pray this Sunday morning that even though we're not together as one people, that God would bind us together through his Holy Spirit, bringing us faith, peace, joy, and love, and spreading that out far beyond our current community. I think if God could move at a time like this. That would just be so powerful for the kingdom. And I trust that God wants to see his kingdom grow. And I trust that God wants to get closer to each and every one of us. And so whether we're gathered together and huddling as a little family, our, our guys are going to watch a little 26-minute kids uh, Sunday morning service that, that we found online. Or if you're watching... Tim Keller or any other leader who's preaching a big sermon this morning, we just give thanks for those people and we pray that we could be together in his presence again. So I'm going to close this with a prayer and I wish you all a wonderful day and I pray for our week. I'm going to keep putting these videos up and I'll see you next week. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you you can meet us wherever we are. We thank you that we can expect your Holy Spirit to move in our homes, in our hearts, in our minds, in our community, and in the world. 
Lord, we pray at this very challenging time that you would bind us together, even as you meet us individually. We pray for all our families and friends who are far from you, that they would come closer to you at this time. If they ask, if they call, if they want to talk, Lord, may our, may our ears be open, that we would hear their questions and, and answer them faithfully and, and authentically, Lord, not giving people the answers that, that they expect or that we think we should be giving, but rather the, the real hard answers, Lord to the real hard questions. And help us not to be afraid of the most difficult ones, the questions like, where are you right now? What are you doing? What's the meaning or purpose in all this? Lord, help us to enter into those mysteries. Help us not to be afraid of them, but to to embrace them, Lord. And to pray that your spirit would be upon us as we do. Father, we are your people, and you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.